How's it going guys? Uh, Junaid here. Uh, it's quite a long time since I did a theory video. Um, so today I'm going to cover a topic that's relative to every angler. Uh, no matter what kind of fishing you're doing, whether it's spinning, it's rock and surf, or even deep sea, uh, this will be relative to you. The topic we're going to cover today is on points to look out for when buying uh, a rod, a reel and, uh, and braid and those are the three in fact, most important components of your tackle the rod, reel and braid uh, without any one of those three it's not possible to, to fish so I'm gonna go over these technical aspects uh, on these three on these three different forms of tackle in, in as much detail as possible it's going to be quite a long video but uh, covers as much as I feel is relevant and often I see guys making mistakes when purchasing tackle uh, this video will try to educate and also empower anglers to make the correct decision when, when buying tackle because if you look at it uh, the most expensive items uh, in your tackle is, your, is most likely your reel then goes to your rod and, and braid so that, and what we talk about in this video will will help you make a, a more informed decision so take very very careful attention pay attention to all the different aspects I cover I'm gonna cover them slowly and try my best to explain it to you so in, in exactly what I mean uh, what I discuss in this video is my opinion uh, it's, it's stuff that I've gathered over the years of fishing in my three decades of angling um, so all the videos we view on this channel is merely to empower anglers and, and to let them improve so I've learned through trial and error through research through, through gathering information from anglers at top level uh, so I'm, what I'm going to say here is just to is to summarize it to you and uh, it will open your vision in, 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 in these three aspects of, of, of rods, reels and braid. So the first thing you want to do when choosing to, to buy any one of these three items is to budget yourself. Because at the end of the day you might want the, the best tackle but uh, it might not be to your financial constraints. So you need to budget yourself as to exactly how much you're willing to spend on, on a rod, a reel and braid. Uh, these items can, can, can be quite expensive. Uh, reels can vary. Uh, going over 20,000 rand for just a reel and a high level rod today, uh, you're looking at around 10,000 rand. Uh, braid depends how often you fish, how hard you fish. Can, can can cost you a lot of money uh, sometimes 700 rand to a thousand rand for 300 meter sport so these are just the top level prices that I'm, men and that I'm mentioning uh, you do need to to, to, to to realize you need to know how much you are willing to spend uh, and to what level of tackle you want to buy uh, it matters on your pa your passion for the sport and also uh, how deep you're willing to go into your pocket. Um, very, very important. I like to talk openly and freely on this channel. Uh, it's for anglers not to get in, in, caught up in a hype. Uh, often we're now in a social media advertising where, where certain products are being hyped. Uh, so anglers should not get caught in that hype they should always see what works best for them uh, and, and, and and buy that but uh, usually we see some guys who maybe we look up to and they're fishing on a certain rod talk about it and and guys just go all out and buy it might not be the correct rod or reel for you so it's important you you find what's best for you and in this video I'm going to discuss certain things that will help you to get closer to that goal so when we talk about buying a rod reel braid you need to identify 
what type of fishing you're doing so in rock and surf uh, angling we typically get uh, your heavy tackle your medium tackle and your light tackle so when you purchase a rod reel or braid it needs to be for that certain facet personally for me i love doing heavy tackle angling so the majority of my tackle is relating to heavy tackle you do get extra heavy you get a bit on a lighter heavy I, I prefer going on the heavy side for the fish that i target but uh, it, it matters to you uh, what what type of angling are you doing what type of angling do you enjoy what tackle are you buying for the specific facet of angling so if you're targeting bronze brim black tails edible fish you can go on a light tackle uh, going to medium tackle is more like an all-round you're going for your gray sharks your brown skates your bigger edibles your your, your small uh, honeycombs and stuff uh, that's for medium tackle but once you go to heavy tackle you're targeting more uh, giant guitar fish your massive honeycomb rays uh, GTs etc so you need to identify which which tackle suits you best and you buy a rod reel and braid with regards to that either one of those three categories but uh, with how tackle is now being produced uh, there is a rod there's a reel there's a braid for every different kind of facet and it's in between also some guys are going like ultra light and then we're going with light medium and heavy medium and it's there's a rod and reel for everybody so uh, it, technology has advanced in, 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 in angling so you need to to find out uh, what works best for you so very importantly is to find a rod reel and braid that's balanced it might not always be the case that is 100% balanced or perfectly balanced but it's important that you find a rod a reel and a, and braid that matches for me i use the uh, uh, like a 7 to 9 ounce or 8 to 10 ounce uh, kind of rod uh, with a reel that's a 20,000 or 25,000 reel and around 50 pound braid uh, generally matches up and uh, the grinder setups and usually uh, initially was made for for, for jigging uh, like deep seas and stuff and it's just been modified now to, to suit us so this kind of things you have to find out uh, what works best for your tackle so i'm going to get down now to the the first part of which we're going to talk about which is rods um, the rods there's various different lengths of rods um, they can vary from 15 foot 6 to 15 foot to 14 foot 6 to 14 to 13 to 12 and it goes down to 7 and 6 foot as we get back to our initial questions what type of angling are you doing but it doesn't necessarily mean that the longer the rod the more heavier tackle it goes and there are certain rods that are longer but they're made for medium tackle uh, i think it gotta do a lot with your physical attributes of how long of a rod or how short of a rod you use um, i use a 15 foot rod um, because uh, well i can load it properly uh, i know guys that are more on the physically weaker side or thinner side uh, prefer using a little bit of a shorter rod, a 14 foot rod. So if those guys cast a 14 and 15 foot, they'd be more comfortable with a 14 foot. Um, for guys using on a lighter tackle, uh, it, it varies also. So make sure you you use a rod with length that suits you. Uh, if it, it depends on your casting action also. Uh, you sometimes use a 15 foot, it's a different action compared to casting a, a 13 foot or a 14 foot. Uh, the rod loads differently so just see what you're comfortable with and choose a rod that is best for you with regards to the length so each rod has a max amount of ounce uh, the rod tip can handle as i said previously i use like a seven to nine ounce or a eight to ten ounce 
now that doesn't mean if you use a uh, 8 to 10 ounce you can just take a 10 ounce sinker put a bait on and chuck it uh, that overweights the tip you can break the rod so I like to if the rod says a max of 8 ounce I like to use a 6 ounce or a big bait or a 7 ounce or a smaller bait uh, you, 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 the rod must not feel pressure because when you cast you put a lot of pressure onto the tip of the rod uh, and it possibly can break if you over exert the tip so make sure that you choose a, a tip also that, that suits you so if you're using more on a medium side, side of uh, angling you can use uh, a maybe 5 to 7 ounce or a 4 to 6 ounce or something like that that's more like a medium kind of, of fishing catch your edibles and all round angling looking more on the light tackle uh, rods can vary from 3 quarter ounce to 2 ounce to 3 ounce matters on you so make sure that you choose a tip of ounce or ounce of of the tip that is suiting you now with modern technology and how rods are currently made uh, we have something called a, a rod action a rod action is whereby uh, you get certain rods that are fast action and you get certain rods that are slow action in fact uh, blanks uh, are coming where companies are now using these rods to make it bend differently um, the faster action rods suit certain guys in the way they cast in the way they hook fish in the way they fight fish and you get other rods that are, that are like slower action which have other attributes so when purchasing a rod make sure you ask is it a fast action or slow action uh, and see what suits best for you uh, personally i like a fast action rod because of my casting action it's a bit of a different different action compared to slow action in the way you load the rod it uh, bends differently uh, but i like a fast action rod slow action rod i also have a slow action rod um it it has its it has its uh, it has these positives also um, the physical weight of a rod is, is, is quite important uh, because you run on a very heavy rod which, which can stay in your back make you exhausted fighting a fish can be hard on your body uh, you want a rod that, that is comfortable for you uh, the blanks currently that are being made compared to what rods were being produced around 10 to 15 years ago rods are relatively super light uh, and, and previously in the pearl glass executive editions those rods were very heavy but they're very strong but you'll find in current uh, rod production the rods are, are, are much more lighter they've been modified in different ways make them as strong and as light but not every rod is the same weight uh, there are some rods that weigh more than others and some rods that are lighter than others feel a rod that you're comfortable with and it's not all about the lighter being better you need to also be comfortable with the rod so take in consideration weight of rod next next aspect when talking on rods is uh, a bionic finger a bionic finger is, um, is 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 on certain rods and certain rods don't come with it so it depends on on, on, on how you cast when you cast with a glove using a plaster but I use a bionic finger I've always used a bionic finger uh, I feel it's very convenient it helps you get extra distance uh, so just check when you're buying a rod does it come with a bionic finger or not if not you can add a bionic finger to it you can purchase it put some cable ties and, and position it correctly and use a bionic finger um, rod guides or rod eyes uh, is, is quite important also uh, my personal preference i like the sic guides reason for this is um well the it, it, it's quite easy on your braid uh, it's very smooth it's strong and uh, the braid comes off quite easily it, it has a nice feel to it when the braid oscillates out of the rod uh, eyes it comes out very very smoothly so the guides are also important they're quite an expensive aspect on the rod uh, if you actually know how much these guides are you're paying a lot for the guides so be aware of the guides 
and or the rod eye, eye rings as they previously stated uh, on the rod uh, they are very very important make sure that it suits your angling uh, when purchasing a rod uh, remember if you're going on a trip for in some long distances or you're going on a fishing trip where you have to walk quite far uh, protection of rod is very very important some rods come with rod cases uh, these cases actually protect the rod and they help you when you're transporting your rod to to your destination it protects it so if you don't have this rod uh, case i advise you get one but most of the of the rods today come with this case they're quite fancy cases and they're quite strong uh, be wary of that so also to understand your rod your rod is uh, something where it can make you land a fish quite easily or it, you can actually lose it if you're, if you're using the wrong rod and you get pulled quite hard the rod can actually come out of your hand uh, where you hold the rod when you're hooking a fish is important how you load the rod when you're casting is important at which angle you load the rod makes a difference so these rods uh, are coming with different attributes the, the rods are different uh, understanding a rod how you hook the fish with the, with the rod is important so basically it's a relationship you have with, a, with an angler and his rod it's a, quite an important one where you have to take time and understand your rod and, and, and eventually with the lightest smallest of bites you'll be able to feel it but if you have a rod that you actually can't control you'll be able to feel it so that covers the aspects and rods um, obviously if, after this video if you have questions uh, just feel free to comment uh, I'll respond to every comment that uh, is posted here uh, I'll give you my views and you can move forward the next aspect I'm going to talk on is uh, is, is the reels um, the reels come in in different sizes um, they have, there's a standard size like an international kind of sizing of, of reels they come in uh, 25,000, 20,000, 18,000, 14,000, 10,000, 8,000, 6,000 and, and so on and uh, that matches on the size of the reel um, obviously a 25,000 reel is bigger than a 20,000 reel uh, spool size so I use a 20,000 size reel I've been comfortable with it as I stated and I enjoy heavy tackle angling it takes quite a bit of braid uh, it suits the kind of fishing I do so depends on the species and type of fishing you're doing so if you're targeting more like on the heavy tackle a 20,000 25,000 is sufficient if you're doing more on a medium tackle angling a 10,000 minimum 14,000 18,000 that range if you're going light tackle you can go 10,000 or below uh, prefer preferably 8,000 or 6,000 somewhere around there uh, depends on, the, on what tackle you're using it's up to you uh, to make that best decision um, you get a speed of reels that are very important uh, the you will see this where it says 20,000 and then you'll get two letters there uh, the, the reel I like to use is uh, a PG which is called a it's called a power gear uh, reason for this is uh, I like to target a bigger fish uh, where you wind slowly you fight the fish, you tie the fish and land it. Uh, whereas in an HG, which is a high speed gear, it reels quite fast. So if you if you try reeling quite fast on a bigger fish, it's gonna exhaust your body, it's hard on a reel, and it's 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 better if you use a slow ratio. But uh, not to say you cannot reel uh, fight a big fish with a PG reel. Uh, the power gear is more for speed like initially made for deep sea where those game fish have to, have to wind really really fast so it does work you, you can wind fast if you if you, your pg has its advantages if you're fishing on the reefs and you need to reel fast out over those rocks you get speed whereas uh hg reel uh sorry a, a pg reel uh it, it it reels quite slowly um yeah so Make sure that you choose a reel, not only on the size and also the, the gear ratio. Um, line capacity when choosing a reel is very important. 
um, how many meters of braid you actually need in your spool will, will determine what size of a reel you use. I like a 20,000 size because I can fill close to 900 meters in it. In fact, I had a, had a scare about three weeks ago. I almost got drummed. I hooked a massive honeycomb which took me close on to seven to eight hundred meters out. Uh, if I had a reel that was on the smaller side, I probably would have, all my line would have got finished. So the fish I target, I'm comfortable with a 20,000 size reel uh, where it can take sufficient amount of braid. Uh, so line capacity is very, very important. Using medium tackle to, to, to light tackle, you don't really need that too much of line unless you work something really big. Uh, yeah, but uh, make sure you choose a, a line capacity reel that is sufficient to your fishing. Um, once you see a reel spool, certain reel spools are much longer. Those are the long casters and then you have ones that are shorter. The, the reels that are longer in spool, those are, in fact, the, the way the braid comes out of the spool, it makes it your, it gives you more distance. Um, compared to a reel that is much shorter, uh, that would for the line braid to come off, it's a bit of a harder process. But strength wise, a, a, a longer spool, a longer spool is 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 less strong because once it's longer, you're putting more pressure, and uh, the reel can take a strain, especially on the shaft of the reel. Um, but if you got a, a shorter reel, it's more compact, gives you less distance, but much more stronger. End of the day. It's what uh, you want uh, to get out of the reel. On the, on the box of the reel, you'll find a, a, a drag strength of the reel. Uh, this is where you have a drag knob, it tightens up, and a certain amount of pressure that comes out that the drag can hold. So be wary of this. The, you don't want something that is too light if you're targeting bigger fish and uh, the drag strength of the reel can't take too much uh, it will be at a disadvantage um, the reels that I use have had sufficient amount uh, of drag where you can put enough pressure to stop a fish to, especially when you're fishing on the reefs for speckles and GTs and stuff you have uh, you have enough amount of, of drag strength to, to stop those fish be wary of when when you when you, when, you, when you, you're casting you, you put the bail arm over and you click it back you wind in there's a line roller now certain reels have a bush and certain reels have a bearing and the bush is what is I've had severe problems before with the, using a bush whereby a fish runs out, it doesn't roll and pass right at the line at the at the at the bush. So I prefer a bearing where it rolls, you have it well surfaced, well oiled, it moves as it's one of the most used uh, kind of aspects in a reel, so make sure it's very well maintained. Another aspect of uh, the reel which is highly underrated is um, is the strength of the handle. So using a reel that has a, has a strong handle can give you an advantage. If you're quite a big fish, like a big black fern or a or Zambezi, and if you have like a, a weak handle, the handle can break. So then the handles are quite an expensive part of a reel for a reason. It's made, you're always reeling, you're always using it. Uh, and there's also pressure once you're fighting a fish, uh, there's quite some pressure there. So having a strong kind of handle on a reel makes a very very big difference that's what we're going to talk on 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 reels i'm coming to the end of my discussion here today and uh, we're going to go to the last aspect which is on braid uh, braids uh, have been introduced to fishing in a good few years now it's been it's been working quite well but there's a slight art to it uh, in fact you do get most commonly you get a First strand, eighth strand, and now there's a ninth strand. I haven't used a ninth strand before, but I only use the eighth strand braid. A fourth strand is more like four different strands put together. It's, um, it's more on the rough side. Uh, you can use that for backing if you want, uh, or if you're fishing like on off the boat or 
if you're fishing on very rocky areas uh, you can use the force strain on, on on reefs it's more 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 rough compared to a smooth eight strain which is thinner has a nice finish gives you extra distance and stuff so each bridge there's a lot of different brands currently out on the market uh, they have different finishes you feel the braid is like basically cotton that's just braided together so you need to feel the braid and feel what kind of braid suits you best uh, the most silkier finishes on the braid have uh, more gives you more distance but uh, the thinner the, the kind of silkiness also weight has to be thin it, it, it breaks up a bit easier compared to braids where it's less silky and, and a bit more uh, thicker it, it, it gives you advantages where it's slightly less abrasive so diameters in braid is very important you get some braids that are 0 0.1 0 0.2 uh, I like a 0 0.28 or 0 0.3 around there it works well for me uh, I use a 50 pound in that 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 range uh, diameter is important where you're fishing the terrain you're fishing in is important because Fishing on quite rocky areas, you need a thicker braid. Compared to if you're fishing on like an open beach, you can use a thinner braid. So use what braid suits you best. So we get different breaking strains in, in braid, starting from I don't know. Well, you don't know if you get under ten pound, but you get like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65, 80, 100, 150, 200 goes to two hundred and fifty and stuff. Uh, I like using a 50 pound. I've only used 50 pound braid in, in all the years I've been fishing. I've pulled as hard as you can. Uh, 50 pound with like around 100 pound to 150 to 250 pound leader. So a 50 pound braid is a good overall braid. If you want a bit more distance, you can go on a slightly thinner braid with less breaking stain, get a bit more distance. So be wary of the different breaking stains. Uh, technique we use for being more economical when using the braid if for example we have a, a 20,000 size reel uh, you can load 600 meters of like 50 pound braid cut off and you're gonna you're gonna put that will be something called your your backing uh, thereafter you can use 300 meters of top shot so for example you break off break a few traces and your braid gets less you can just take off the 300 knot where the 300 meter started uh, chuck it away and you can reload it again instead of loading the whole thing up and holding down again so to work on that strategy if that's the size of your reel uh, you won't have a problem so a braid leader uh, is very very important I use two rod lengths of braid leader or a FG knot attached to my main braid uh, depends where you're fishing what what you're fishing for a hundred pound 120 pound can catch you everything uh, if you're fishing on like fishing on a diamond smash or you're fishing for raggies or fishing on a point you may use 200 pound 250 pound but if you're using fishing for cob medium tackle 80 pound is fine it's sufficient 100 pound also can can it's the best all round can can catch you everything so remember braid is highly abrasive the moment it touches a rock it's most likely gonna cut off so at sometimes when the muscles and stuff get bru you bruise your braid uh, you'll find like strands coming off from your your braid. Uh, don't take a chance. Cut it off, chuck it away, and reload your braid. So the last aspect we're gonna talk on is uh, colors in braid. I mean, you'll see now when you go to tackle shops that there's different colors in braid, and what actually that means? Uh, it's just different dye inks that are used onto the braid. Some are different colors, and you know how much exactly is gone out, how much is left. But to me the colors really don't make a difference the only impact i've had in colors in braid is when there's a uh, discolored water i've i found that you use a colorful braid the small sharks bite it off become really frustrating throw after throw they just bite the braid off you don't get a bite you just feel cough and then it's gone so that's just me where i fish uh, i use colors really don't make a difference and uh, unless it's those small sharks eating those colorful braid so yeah, this is now my video of targeted the three aspects I wanted to speak on. I see this is a half an hour video. Hope you learned something from this. And yeah, guys, let me know if you if you have any questions on this uh, brands. We can talk about what type of fishing you're doing. Yeah, thanks guys for listening to this video. 
uh hopefully gonna do more like this shot